Hello friends, this is Roshni welcoming you again to the channel Circuit Globe. Today, first we'll understand what is superposition theorem and then we'll see how to apply the theorem in any circuit. So guys, let's get started. So friends, superposition theorem is applicable for circuits having multiple sources. Let's see what it states. Basically, for any linear bilateral network having multiple sources, the voltage or current through a specific branch that is also called the response of the network must be equal to the summation of voltage or current through that particular branch generated by each independent source separately and while considering one source, all the other sources must be replaced with their internal resistances. Consider the network shown here having a current source and a voltage source and three resistances R1, R2 and R3. Suppose we have to determine the drop across this particular branch that is across resistance R3 and as there are two active sources so individually we have to calculate the drop across R3 by considering each source separately. At one time we will consider the current source and in the other time we will consider the voltage source. Now you must be thinking how can you get the overall response of the circuit using superposition theorem. So friends for this you need to follow a proper sequence of steps. So let's see what are the steps that are required to be followed to solve any circuit using superposition theorem. So friends as we have already discussed that superposition theorem is applicable for circuits with multiple sources. So the first step involves the identification of multiple sources in the network and the element across which voltage or current through is to be calculated. So under the presence of multiple sources the next step involves the selection of a single active source of the network through which the response is to be calculated. So for this you have to select that particular source and must replace all the rest of the sources with their respective internal resistances. Now by using any network simplification technique like KVL or KCL you have to determine the electrical response of the network through that desired element. And further you have to repeat this process for each particular source present in the network. Once you have got the response for each particular element of the network then you have to sum up the responses generated from each individual source in order to get the overall response of the circuit. So I think by now you have got the basic idea of how to solve superposition theorem. Let's now take an example to have a better idea about the same. So consider the circuit shown here. Suppose we have to find the current flowing through 10 ohm resistance using superposition theorem for this particular circuit. So as we are having two sources one is of 20 volts and another is of 15 volts. So we will consider each source separately in order to find the current flowing through branch AB that is through resistance of 10 ohms. Okay. So friends let's first consider 20 volt source. As we all know that a voltage source has an internal resistance of 0 and a current source has an internal resistance of infinity and so voltage source is replaced by a short circuit condition and current source is replaced by an open circuit condition. And in this circuit we are only considering 20 volt source so the 15 volt source present over here is replaced by its internal resistance so is short circuited. So we will have this particular circuit. Now we will apply KVL in all the three loops of this circuit. So for loop 1 as we are having a 20 volt source present over here so we will have 20 is equals to 8 of I1 minus 8 of I2. Further for loop 2 we will have 8 I1 minus 14 I2 plus 6 I3 is equals to 0 and for loop 3 we are having three resistances one is of 6 ohm another is of 8 ohms and the next one is of 10 ohms. So on applying KVL we will get 6 I2 minus 24 I3 is equals to 0. On solving all these three equations we will get the value of I3 as 1.11 ampere. We have only shown the value of I3 over here because we need to calculate the current flowing through this 10 ohm resistance for this particular circuit. If you want you can find the value of I1 and I2 as well but it's of no use over here. So for 20 volt source we have calculated the current flowing through 10 ohm resistance. Okay. 
Moving further, let's now consider 15 volt source. So here we have replaced the 20 volt source with its respective internal resistance. That is, this particular branch is short circuited and 15 volt source is present over here. Now we will apply KVL in all the three loops. So for loop 1, on applying KVL, we will get the equation as 8IA minus 8IB is equals to 0. Further for loop 2, we will get 8IA minus 14IB plus 6IC is equals to 15 as a 15 volt source is present for this particular loop. But as we can see that the current is leaving negative terminal and reaching positive terminal. So we have considered the polarity in reverse manner. That is minus 15. Okay. Further for loop 3. We will get the equation as 6IB minus 24IC is equals to minus 15. And on solving these equations. We will get the current flowing through this particular branch. That is IC is equals to 0 amperes. So now we have got the current through 10 ohm resistance by considering each individual source. So on adding both the currents we will get the overall current of the circuit is equals to 1.11 amperes. This is how the expected response of the circuit is calculated using superposition theorem. Well friends this is all about superposition theorem and its numerical implementation. I hope this lecture turns out to be a useful one for you. So please guys like this video and share with your friends. Also don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates. I'll be back with another interesting topic. Till then take care. Bye bye.